Hello, welcome to the Monday, February 21st, 2022 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Big thanks, as always, to our readers who send us interesting malware. Xavier looked at a recent example that claimed to be sort of a PDF. Uh, the extension was .tar.lc, but... The file name ahead of the extension ended with a PDF. I guess that's sort of how they try to make it look like a PDF. Other odd thing, the .lc extension is usually not a recoverable uh, with Windows. If you just click on it, it'll tell you need to uh, load the appropriate tool from the App Store. Turn out to be just uh, compressed and uh, tarred. And then inside you didn't have a PDF. No, it was your usual Visual Basic script. And Xavier is going through the decode of that script to figure out what it's eventually attempting uh, to accomplish, which in this case was installing a copy of uh, Remco's RAT. A couple of takeaways from this. First of all, of course, attackers are always trying new things. They may not initially make sense, but well, uh, still worth for the attacker to give it a try and essentially see what sticks. So be wary of any unusual extensions uh, hitting your users in email attachments. And we've got a critical vulnerability in the Cassandra NoSQL database. Cassandra is an Apache project. Now, uh, before you get too worried, it's not exploitable in the default configuration. The problem here is that Cassandra offers the option to provide user-defined functions. And these functions are written in JavaScript, but can call Java, and they're running in Cassandra's own sandbox. As an execution engine here, it uses a NASHORN a JavaScript uh, engine that is specifically requiring that you run it in a sandbox because it uh, can't guarantee by itself that uh, the code that's being run is secure. But the sandbox that's implemented in Cassandra can easily uh, be uh, bypassed. So this can then lead to a full remote code execution on the server. Now, by default, user-defined functions are not enabled, so you have to enable that. You also have to enable scripted user-defined functions, so not just enable user-defined functions. And thirdly, you have to disable enable user-defined functions threats. So I think you definitely should expedite patching for this vulnerability and uh, certainly do check uh, hopefully today, whether or not uh, your Cassandra engines are allowing these user-defined functions and check the blog post by JFrog, who found this vulnerability and reported it for additional uh, details. And decryption solution vendor Passver came out with what they're calling their Passver Kit Forensic t 2 add-on. T2 refers here to Apple's T2 chip, which implements the secure enclave on a number of different Apple products. And passwords for Apple's uh, file vault are maintained as part of the T2 chip. And now what password came up with was essentially a way to exploit a vulnerability in the T2 chip to load a custom firmware. This will disable some of the brute force protections that are present in the T2 chip and essentially allow brute forcing of uh, the encryption uh, passphrases. It's still slow, apparently 15 passphrases per second. So as long as you have a long random passphrase, you should still be okay and not have to worry too much about this particular attack. And if you are using a more modern Ubuntu Linux system, you may have run into Snap, the package manager that can be used to install various software. Well, a Qualys found to approach escalation flaws in it. So update it. Overall, I wouldn't consider them super severe, but still something you do want to update as updated packages become available. 
And that's it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.